Welcome to a video about the lung program at uh, Richmond University Medical Center. My name is Dr. Lauren Harris. I am the Chairman of Surgery and uh, Chief of General Thoracic Surgery here at Richmond University Medical Center. I would like to talk to you first of all about uh, lung cancer screening. Lung cancer screening is not a new concept. There have been many studies uh, over the last 50 to 75 years looking at a way to make earlier diagnoses of patients with lung cancer because like other cancers, the earlier the diagnosis is made, the better the treatment and the longer the patient can survive. In 2010, uh, the preliminary data for the National Lung Cancer Screening Trial uh, was first published and this was a large prospective randomized trial which showed that using low-dose CAT scans, nodules could be seen in high-risk patients and some of them uh, were found to be lung cancers and when compared with patients who were not receiving those screens, those patients whose cancers were diagnosed early using those techniques had a much better long-term outcome. As a result, uh, lung cancer screening using low-dose CAT scan has become a, a community standard here in the United States uh, using various criteria for entering patients, which we'll talk about uh, shortly. Hello, I'm Dr. Keith Diaz. I'm the Chief of Pulmonary Medicine here at Richmond University Medical Center. And part of my role is to take care of critically ill patients here in the intensive care unit as well as see patients in the inpatient pulmonary setting in terms of anybody who might have respiratory problems, as well as patients in the outpatient or office setting. Because of many of the patients I see who have respiratory issues, many of them uh, have smoked. And part of my routine questioning is to ask them exactly, you know, how much they have smoked and over what period of time. Dr. Harris mentioned that part of our lung screening um, does encompass high-risk patients. So anybody who has been considered to have smoked what we would say is 20-pack years would fall under that high-risk category. What do I mean by 20-pack years is that if you smoke one pack a day of cigarettes for one year, that would be considered one pack year. Uh, if you've smoked two packs of cigarettes for 10 years, that would also be considered to have 20-pack years. So if you've smoked more than 20-pack years and you're over the age of 50 and you are currently smoking or have quit uh, within the past 15 years, you would be considered in that high risk setting. We would recommend you then to get a lung cancer screening. I'm also the originator here of the lung cancer screening program at Rumsey and we've now been screening patients successfully for about eight years now. And I would like to say that our program has been uh, very successful um, and most of that reason here is for this person here, Nurse Nancy. Thank you. My name is Nancy Sayaruni. I'm the nurse navigator for the lung screening program. We started our program in 2014 and we have been going nonstop ever since. What, it, what exactly is a lung screening is a low dose CAT scan. It takes all of three minutes, but it can save lives. So how do you get a low dose CAT scan? So like Dr. Diaz had said and Dr. Harris said, they, it, it is a imaging order that is given to the patient from the physician. So when a patient sees their physician, they are asked questions about their smoking history. And if they fit mm -hmm. that criteria, they will be given an imaging order. And we have worked very well with the community and the private physicians out in the community that they know to tell the patients to call me and then I will set up their lung screening exam. Like I said, it takes all of three minutes, but it does have to be registered. There does have to have insurance authorization. And so it may take a, a, a few days, it may take a week, depending on the insurance. But I personally meet each patient, speak to each patient several times during the screening program. Um, and I meet them at the front door of the hospital. I escort them to the CAT scan, and after their CAT scan is done, 
we do have a conversation about tobacco sensation. I am a tobacco specialist, and prior to COVID, we were having tobacco classes. But at this point, I do individual classes with the patients when I meet them and if necessary. Uh, so within 24 hours, a patient is given their results, and God willing, everything is okay. They come back annually. If there is something that we need to look further at, then Dr. Harris, Dr. Diaz, review it, as well as their primary care physician, and then further testing may be needed. It is an annual test, and we do have patients right now that have been coming back for the past eight years, and they have been absolutely fine. But it does give them peace of mind. The, the reason that high-risk patients should undergo lung cancer screening is that we have been looking at this for 12 to 15 years now since the publication of a large trial that I mentioned at the beginning. And it clearly has shown uh, an improvement in survival with lung cancer. Uh, lung cancer is by far the most, the most common cause of cancer deaths in the United States. And certainly here in Staten Island, of, of the five boroughs, the smoking rate in, in Staten Island is by far the highest. Somewhere between 18 and 20 percent of uh, people currently smoke uh, on Staten Island. So the, the risk of having lung cancer is, is much higher here. And the, the beauty of lung cancer screening is that it doesn't take much time. Uh, and the vast majority of people who get screened will not be found to have a lung cancer but those who are, are found in much earlier stages of the cancer and are much better candidates for surgical removal, which can be done minimally invasively with uh, essentially a uh, very short uh, hospital stay and minimal pain following the surgery. The only way to cure lung cancer is with surgery. And those patients who have early cancers are much higher uh, cure rate based on having the surgery, which now can be done robotically with, uh, with minimally invasive techniques. So it's very important that if you fit into one of these categories, that you enroll yourself in, uh, in our uh, lung cancer screening program, which will uh, uh, be uh, taken care of uh, for you in the sense of not requiring a lot of input from you uh, to get these things done and can be very done very conveniently. Um, and uh, again, the vast majority of people who have lung cancer screening will not be found to have lung cancer. Uh, and certainly on the initial screenings, uh, the vast majority of people who do develop lung cancer while in the screening program do so during their follow-up screens. So it's important to get started and get yourself enrolled if you are one of these high-risk patients. Like Dr. Harris has said, it's not one and done. So to keep the momentum going as a navigator, my role is to make sure that those patients that had their annual return the next year. So with that being said, reminders are sent out to, to all the patients from one year to the next. And we've built a relationship with the patients. Well, you may ask yourself, what exactly is a navigator? Why is she different than a, than a regular nurse? Um, a registered nurse is there to advocate for your patients. A navigator, I am not only advocating, but I'm actually helping you through the whole system. So yes, I am certified in nurse navigation as well as tobacco, but I am, I call myself I'm the daughter that the patient doesn't have on the inside of healthcare to help them get through the whole system because it is a frightening experience anytime you walk into the institution of any hospital. So I am there to make sure that it's streamlined and it's comfortable and we get the job done. And I, as I say to the patients, I'll see you next year. God will. I do believe that um, Richmond University Medical Center has uh, really excelled at this uh, screening process. As I said, we've been doing this for eight years. We were actually one of the first in New York City to make such a comprehensive program. And we've become very good at streamlining the process 
uh, as Nancy said, that she will organize with radiology, meet them at the door, and the patient is in and out of the hospital within a very short period of time. Uh, subsequent to that, we have results, you know, given to the patient, and then we were able to then follow up with any further studies that may be needed um, and coordinate whatever care that person may have. So if you fit the high-risk category, if you have family or friends that you're concerned about who may uh, be one of these people at risk, I would suggest Richmond University Medical Center as the option for that. And if you're concerned about how, how do you get here, um, do I need a family member to accompany me? If you have a family member that brings you, I usually tell the patients, have them wait in the car because you will be in and out within 15 minutes. The test itself takes all of three minutes. The whole process of being here at the hospital is about a 15 minute time frame. And within 24 hours, we have a working relationship with the radiologist and CAT scan, as Dr. Diaz said, they have their results. And we move on from there. So like we, we have said before, it's very important that you get into the lung cancer screening program if you fit these criteria. And very similar to mammography for patients uh, of a certain age, uh, it's very important that you have the test and have the follow-up uh, 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 so that we can find uh, issues that you might have. And again, the majority will not have any issues. But those who do have cancer uh, will be treated minimally invasively and uh, have a significant improvement in, in, their, uh, in their survival. So when you see your doctor, don't be afraid to say that, yes, you are a smoker or you are a former smoker. Please get your imaging order and please call me. I'd be happy to take care of you.